Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, whenever we're maybe tuning in. This is Yonks, and we are now, I can't believe it, it's already our seventh, seventh work group. And while we're working towards structuring our nurturing our narrative, the Community Energy Innovation Prize. And not only that, the narrative is really coalesced. We're ta talking about hashtags. Gigs go green with Tricoop STO, and going to be asking the question and answering the question: Can two hashtags change the world? So uh, let's hop right in here. This is Notion. Notion is our, is our knowledge base collaborative tool for doing all the things, and we've got some agenda. And I'm going to scroll right down here. So. So this is something that we're still talking about. We're still accepting new team, new team. This is one of the things that we're, they had, uh, we're just finishing up the collegiate, collegiate. There's three tracks for the Community Energy Innovation Prize. Not going to go into details on that. But if you are interested here, I do have the, have the opportunity for you to grab a time slot on my calendar so that we can have a conversation. We do, we do believe it can contribute something worthwhile to our team. And we've got so much to do and the clock is ticking. So one of the one of the things, and we'll circle back on some of these things here. But one of the things that we didn't even put on the agenda, agenda that's very very exciting, is that we have gotten approved from Chainraise. We were talking about look evaluating here different security token offering platforms, and we did get a, uh, an approval to go ahead with our Tri Co op security token offering token offering and things. Time permitting, uh, we'll probably grab a time slot on their calendar to have the next conversation because that could affect our GTM strategy for Tesla Black Dow. And GTM, GTM is our go-to-market strategy. And from my perspective, my personal resources is, are going to be largely spent around the GTM strategy for Tesla Black, Black Dow. So to rewind here a little bit to this previous bullet point is the various governance frameworks. This is one of the things that uh, is a very foundational aspect of the organizations that we're fostering here. And the, the main thing is that I really want to keep it simple. The opportunity to overcomplicate things and like one of the one of the histories that we have here is that we the project for Hero X American Made Challenge the Token Town the HOA Destroyer and just thinking of a community and a guy and a governance work that's one that really has an opportunity and that's one that will likely bring in into some of our narratives but I wanted to pop into here what is a cooperative so this is one of the things this, the reason that I like this, and this is just straight up copy and paste. I'm going to go ahead and open this, this for ready to from the International Cooperative Alliance. And instead of looking at the notion agenda here, I just copied and pasted all of this stuff from the International Cooperative Alliance. And I think that these cooperative principles are, are about because my thoughts are is that I believe that DAOs, decentralized autonomous organizations, are, are technology enabled cooperatives. And the more that we can use, use existing cooperative principles, and they have an amazing document that I'm going to show you here. Uh, is there any, anybody else that's on, the, that's on the working group familiar with the seven cooperative principles? I will take the silence as a no or so first of all voluntary and open membership democratic democratic member control member economic participation this is one of the things that i'm really excited as we talk about tokenomics i don't think that we're going to talk that much about tokenomics here today because um that's one of the things that i still need to break down our tesla black dow dow of what that's going to look like so autonomy and independence, and one of the things that really, really want to foster here from, and I was talking a little bit about updating our working, our working group, really update it with, there's an acronym that I really like, F-E-E-L, FEL, fun, 
earning, earning, and earning. And that's one of the things that I really want to establish from a cultural and, and ethos standpoint. So, and the autonomy and independence is one of the things too that will be an ongoing work in progress. And was talking a little bit about this before we start, started our live stream here was I really envision as we get some get some track here as we start onboarding new members into the DAO, the opportunity to create working groups and or guilds or pods or whatever whatever we want to call that with all that within our community will absolutely exist because people naturally gravitate more towards a towards a skills thing. Uh, whether that's an existing skill that they have or potentially one that they would like to refine and get better at. So mission training and information, that's one of the things that I love about our working groups is, is that it's pretty, pretty immersive and we do lots of things as far as getting things done within our working group too. Operation among cooperatives, this is an interesting idea that I think that there's strong efforts from what I've seen about that and then concern for community. So this is one of the things that I think that we should utilize from a foundational aspect as far as, or as creating the governance within our decentralized autonomous, autonomous organization. Does, does anybody want to chime in some thoughts on, on these cooperative principles? I think we need to make sure that we link that in our website when we get it built, because um, I don't think a lot of people are very familiar with co-ops at all, or if they might be, they're thinking like very rural electric co-ops or something like that, not like this. Absolutely. And here, here's one of the things, Thanks, Tyler, we, we've actually got this page in our Notion right now, and this is actually in our FAQ's database. So, and here's what it looks like. Uh, just from a web from a website. So this is one of the things that we have a lot of capability to just look at uh, or implement because one of the things with that I'm still trying to package packages, we're talking about bringing three cooperative cooperatives, basically creating three publicly traded cooperatives via the security token offering that we're doing. So this is actually what the, what this looks like. I'm in Brave on a browser. So this is, this is one of the things. I don't know if there's the opportunity uh, to change this to more branded site. I don't know if it really makes sense because because Triple Win Foundation, Three Win DAO is our nonprofit umbrella for this DAO ecosystem that we're building. But I mean, looking at this on a website, it actually looks this notion page looks really clean. And this is one of the things like right now we're using using solar EV is probably out of the three cooperatives, the one that has the one that has refined narrative. So like the opportunity to continue to use now with Tesla Black, where we're, where we're actually to create an e-commerce and have a minimum viable product be a different web presence that we're looking at creating and we do have a lot of digital assets that we've been acquiring one of the things that will probably um, continue to break down like right now uh, we did get tesla black tesla dot black i didn't even know dot black was a top level domain until looking at pork bun the other day Right now, this is a very out of the box WordPress installation. There's about, I think the only thing that I changed was the uh, title. And then I also gave it the tagline, the most profitable community for gig workers. So this is built with built with words and we're going to be using WooCommerce for our, our chart. And that's one of the ways that we're going to be onboarding people into the DAO. And we really expect that People are going to large on board through either a hybrid event or a webinar. That's one of the things. One of the things we're talking about here. So let me go back to our agenda real quick. So I think that it would be solid, but just Tyler to to put like a page here, like a cooperative principles here, right on the website, and just make that you know. And that's one of the things 
I'm open for ideas uh, as far as what we're really wanting to communicate. And this is one of the things that's going to be, again, again, very open and iterative process. And the more that people that have subject, subject expertise on these various topics, they love creating content. And um, anyway, I could, uh, we, I'm, I'm starting to ramble, so I'm going to ramble, so I'm going to get you into over here. All right. So one, one oh, question, though. Go ahead, Sean. Absolutely. So one of the things is the commitment to community and cooperatives are all about community. But I think one of the tricky things here is defining what our community is, right? Because. Yeah, it's a great point, Sean. I think one of the things that we're um, trying to make a point of is the the car sharing people will be mostly in a community with each other. The house sharing people will mostly be in a community with each other, but kind of a general larger ecosystem. I think it's what we're trying to differentiate is very different from landlord tenant or owner renter. Like most of these situations are where there's no collaboration or there's no, there's no building together. That's what we're trying to create. Mm -hmm. And like each one of these communities where you get all the Tesla workers serving a region and they're using a set of solar chargers in, in the same region. I understand that that would be very much a community, but then if you have like a larger group of people dedicated to making this uh, DAO and technology and so forth work, you know, it becomes a much different type of community, right? Yeah. So just to kind of put some thoughts behind this is you're, you're absolutely right. Cause like yourself, Sean, you might not identify as a gig worker, but you you love what we're building here and love to contribute to the DAO. So I think that absolutely having, and this is one of the, this is one of the things, uh, as we continue to have more conversations, like defining some roles and responsibilities, because uh, another one are solarpreneurs. Uh, there's actually, there's actually a solar podcast and thinking about like this, solar ev this community solar model there's there's absolutely economic incentives and from what i understand within the solar they're they're normally around around percent of of the deal i don't know uh and i think that that's more geared for rooftop solar three percent on you know 50 to 150 grand is very different than three percent on on a 15 million dollar project so um have having defining uh what community is through roles and responsibilities. And I think that this kind of plays into what was, was talking about a little bit with the guilds and stuff like that. Um, and I'm, and I'm, I'm going to go ahead and open up because uh, I didn't allocate any time here to talk on D work, but, but I did actually clean up quite a bit uh, since the last time that we talked about, talked about it and, here is the link for our D work. Let me throw this in the Zoom chat here for everybody. Everybody. And let me make this bigger for everybody on the other end. So I cleaned it up here. Like this is Win Foundation again. That's the nonprofit where we roll up and right and right building really all of the projects under web3 freedom club uh this is a legacy board that we had for retoken the real estate dow so one of the things and this is the opportunity that we have, that we have doing some autonomy like there's a lot of different things that can be can be done and one of the ways that we can track and create some economic incentives like like that's one of the things that we have we have token to represent each of these projects and not going to unpack all of that right now but um this is just just something like right now under tri co-op sto i've got two di two different books for this this is our community energy innovation prize so like there's going to be tasks that are unique and this is a brand new board like um We've got another board that we were, we were using solar EV. There's a little bit of cleanup to transition from solar EV into the into the go green with Trico up STO. And that's one of the things I'm going to uh, do offline. Um, let me see on this other board here. Um, so like 
this is one that Tyler had had on the board on our agenda. And, and this, so my thoughts right now is instead of thinking about creating a tri co op, co op, because like one of the main things that I believe that we, we need to do is demonstrate traction and onboard members into Tesla Black Dow, which we're going to be creating the minimum viable product. Let me actually go over to that real quick. Let me throw that link for everybody. And just a subtle thing here um, that you can see, put Colorado here, Colorado here, just echo the opportunity that exists is that we're working on building a, building a model through tri op security token offering that can be replicated on a state-by-state -state basis. So close windows. So I like, and I'm going to, I'm going to put this as a next action is create a cooperative principles page on tesla.black website. I'm going to move this. I'm going to move this to carry over here this uh cuz this is something that we'll we'll have more conversation about too. Oh, thank you all. Bullets. It's that later. Okay. So The, we're right now we're discussing the GTM strategy for Te Tesla Black Out, and this is one of the things that we talked a little bit about here. So my thoughts on this is instead of thinking about how create a tri co op STO pitch deck, because when you think about like from a mental timeline standpoint, right now, um, and let me put these dates because this is something else. Like so. I don't know if this is realistic. Uh, 1122, and we're and we're looking at doula. Let me let me see if I've got that right. Let me do a search. I think I've got that as I've got that as doula. Doula is a business business service type of a platform. Start up your dream business. business. So we've we've gone through the process of doing a business ourselves. There's a couple reasons that wanting to look at doula for. Uh, first of all, I want to see what the experience looks. Like. Uh, there, there's another aspect that's been problematic is a bank account. We we have a solution for uh, several DAOs that we've used, but. Start your business. So they're actually doula is set up to do a DAO LLC. Um, one, um, one of the things that thinking about as far as doula is that we're talking about having this this network through Tesla Black, our DAO members, where my belief is that most people that are independent independent collectors with Uber and Lyft, they do that as a natural person as a legal business entity. And this is one of the things I've personally, as a Uber and Lyft driver, I've had an LLC that, I, that I've opted with basically since I started driving and not going to unpack the, all, all the reasons why, but doula is also a potential business as a service. That's one of the things that we put as a potential benefit as far as like creating a value ladder within tests for our DAO members, these gig workers that we're going to be creating the circular, the circular business for. So does, does anybody have, I, I don't know if we really talked that much about doula. I'm actually going to go through because I just, I did see that they were here in our notion. So this is one of the things, things that I'm doing on notion is actually just doing some stuff. So we've got a DAO solutions database here, notion, because, uh, and, there's a lot of different tools and the things that I love about blockchain is the opportunity 
for us to use other solutions within the ecosystem where we don't we don't have to reinvent the wheel and create that from an uh, in-house stand standpoint. So I'm going to go ahead and just do a new tool here for Doula. And we're going to call this a uh, purpose is business as a service. And we put in a banking business here too. So status is that we're considering, I'm going to put a priority of one because the we we the reason that this is something that we need to get knocked out is that we want to set up an e-commerce where we're, where we're starting to receive payments for people to onboard into our DAO and having a bank account. Like I'm pretty sure that we can set up a Stripe account without, without having to have an account because Stripe would love to hold our money for us. Uh, for those that aren't familiar, Stripe, Stripe is a uh, back-end processing service that a lot of uh, online merchants use. So we'll put this as a project for Tesla Black right right here. And I probably should break this out because because uh, um, things too. And I've got I've had a long and uh, and I'm going to apologize to both Amy and Tyler. This is something that I've been procrastinating on for a while is to create a visual org chart. And what I'm talking about here, like um. um uh, this is this is a, the the lab that I did, uh, and when you go to three win dot foundation, it, re it redirects project page here. So, like, let me let me just show you in this tab three win dot foundation, and then we and we go and it comes over here to our notion site. So, um, so what I was I was talking about here is creating a DAO page because. This is for Colorado. The DAO is going to be like the DAO that we're talking about launching via Doula is a different entity than what we're going to be bringing public via Tri Co op security token offering. Because again, we're looking to create a model that a model that created on a state by state basis. So think of Tesla Black DAO as the mothership, and that's one of the things that will be really exciting to build in um, there. But anyway, anyway, uh, I'm going to finish up. I'm going to put this URL in here, and this is some something to, uh, that we'll take that offline and have a conversation to see what that process looks like. But before, does anybody have any thoughts, thoughts on Doula before we move on to the next thing? Cool. All right, so I'm going to put this as a next action on board Tesla Black. Dow, Dow, Doula. So, and this is where we were talking about creating legal entity for Tesla Black Dow. And that will be a Wyoming LLC. And the thoughts are is that, um, and whether whether we need to register that, that's one of the conversations that we can put forward. We're building to, and I'm, I'm not going to that up right now, the uh, board of stewards. That's something that I'm wanting to create some more collateral offline to package up a little bit better. So a uh, 22, one of the things, and I don't know if it will line up, but we were talking about having a lock party here, lock party at Tesla house co-op in North Glen. So one of the things, Tesla's co-op, we haven't had a lot of conversations. We're not going to have much conversations about it today. Tesla's co-op is one of the house hacks that Tyler and I are living in that um, we're really looking and we're actually actually planning to be our proof of concept for, uh, we'll call this the, this the single family house, house proof of concept for Sir EV. So this is one of the things, call, call it a brand. So brand, brand, slash single family house proof of concept. So just to provide, provide some more story, like um, we're actually looking to put another Tesla house co-op online in one of our pilot communities. Um, but uh, getting back to the block party, 
Uh, we've hosted a block party here already once, and this is something that we really want to get great at, great at. This goes back to creating a fun, earning, and learning culture. Sure. We want to get great at having local community and fostering local community. One of the reasons that we love the block party idea, idea North Glen has this literally block party in a trailer that doesn't cause and cost. You just need to get your neighbor's approval. And we've already went through that process once before. It was a fabulous experience and looking to am amplify that more in 2024 and beyond. So the reason for the 22 is here. Let's let's just fast forward this a little bit. 122, um, 2024, uh, Tesla, uh, this is the Kickstarter uh, campaign launches. And we're going to, I don't know if, uh, I'm really liking the leaning into gigs go green. Um, and I, I don't know how long, I know how long, this is one of the things that we will look into as far as some best practices with Tricoop STO launching Tesla Black Dow and and phase one here. Do you like phase one or stage one better? I don't know if it really matters. Really matters. That's about the same. And the thought on the phase one, just to provide a little um, idea here is that and i don't know if i put the house hacking dow but like tyler and i have been house hacking for a while and for those that aren't familiar uh there's actually a book on amazon called house hacking and i wasn't aware that it had as much that it had as much it did until i went to a meetup that has over 1600 people in it and there was probably 40 to like 40 to sell at the meetup and you were with me at that meetup weren't you tyler yeah, and what was what I thought was really interesting was how open that so there was a presenter there who was talking about his greatest hits and some pretty big messes, which I thought was really interesting. It wasn't just it's all cookies and roses and every single house hack always works and it's always a home run. So I I love that perspective of saying we've had some house hacks that were better than others and we've had a couple that were busts and you know, just being able to have that real perspective, I think we pretty valuable on those projects. So absolutely. And the thoughts to bring that, bring that back a little bit is we get this model dialed in for Tesla Black, uh, where we're creating this gig workers that's primarily through the lens of Uber and Lyft drivers. The thoughts are is, is there will probably be a different audience for people that are interested in house hacking and the hacking and the opera just basically change maybe the benefits or use some of the same benefits and launch a house hacking decking DAO. It could be the engine. Cause like one of the things that Amy had, Amy had a great engine when we were having these conversations is who is going to vet the drivers? Well, we're creating this DAO and that's going to be one of the core th things that create within this ecosystem. Cause we're building this, this co-op model where the main premise is that one driver one car is very, very inefficient. And we're going to be, our, our model is going to be largely based around a driver A, driver, driver B. Driver A would have the car be a weekday warrior, Monday to Thursday, driver B, Friday, Saturday, Friday, Saturday. But we still want to have a method and process of vetting the drivers, you know, taking into consider, consideration geographic, geographic area. And a lot of that will come even more full circle when we're really building out this in out this economy but getting back to the timeline here 22222 this is when try co-op sto for Caldo is available to invest uh, this is also um launching on dow day 2024 which uh we've already got february 22nd there so we years ago uh proclaimed international dow day on 222 and the thing that's really exciting is that tyler helped to arrange chain raise who we're going to be moving forward with launching our security token offering so this is really coming for all circle to circle to from when we proclaimed international dow day in 2022 we're going to be 
bringing forward our own circuit economy model to market via tri co op security token offering for, for Colorado. And the thing that's exciting about this on 223 Denver 2024 launches. And this is something, if anybody's interested, we've we've started reaching out to see if it makes it makes sense. Um, I'm gonna put on here sponsorship, sponsorship booth equals 30k. So our thoughts are is is instead of getting a booth, because this is something that Nick brought forward. I don't think that he was aware that this was that this was, and just to put a numbers behind. ETH Denver is expecting, I think, anywhere from 25 to 40,000 people here in Denver. So one of our thoughts is for this event, and this is one of this is one of the that I would love to do a hybrid event and or a ticket a ticket event. And one of the things that I would like to have some thoughts surrounding is using our so social token. And this, we haven't even minted this social token yet. This is something that we might do today. Um, I'm not sure if we will or will or not, but we'll see if we have some time. I was kind of wanting to come up with a, a, a unique number for fun as far as from a quantity standpoint, using our social token to um, register for the event. And think like 20 to $50 ticketed, cost re retail and these are the kind of benefit uh benefit for DAO members because one of the thoughts too is that we're talking about having tesla black DAO be during during 69 dollars a year so the thoughts are is that as a reward for onboarding we can give people 69 social tokens or whenever that goes up so this is also like just thinking through a stuff that we would like to see happen behind the scenes. This is the kind of thing behind the scenes that we would, would like to see some automated framework. And that's something that we'll continue to talk talk more about. So here we've, we've got uh, ETH Denver. And then we were talking about either 3, 22, 22 4, 22 Kickstarter campaign launches. And I'm going to just copy copy this row here. Uh, this is gigs go green with uh, uh, launching house hacking DAO, and this is, of course, very, very formational or um, um, just thinking out loud. And a lot of this will just depend on you know the, the success that we have here and creating a narrative. And one of the thoughts are is that again. The fun funnel the, could bring people into this because one of the things that we're really wanting to do with Kickstarter is hopefully convert people. And from what I understand, Kickstarter has about a 20 million uh, user base. And if you tap into the Kickstarter algorithm, then that's something that's something amplified through that ecosystem. We, we still are fully expecting to bring most of the marketing activities, and this is why that we're talking about a go-to-market strategy for Tesla, Tesla Block. But this is kind of just some thoughts um, that we've got, and this is one of the things we've got, got an existing roadmap, and this is where we're really wanting to get incorporate the current direction with the, because the roadmap, roadmap that we're creating was, was a roadmap that we created through a solar EV narrative lens. We really like the um, bringing forward the gig workers through Tesla Black because that's one of the reasons that we, a um, lot longer story, not going to go into details. So does anybody have any more thoughts or ideas on the timeline? This this will basically be through the first half of 2024 from a time perspective. Um, just one quick thing about East Denver. Um, the boost being 30,000 plus, I think it it doesn't make sense for us to do a booth, but we were talking about doing a side event or party or happy hour or whatever. Um, and we can we can talk about that later, but we are, especially if any guys are planning on attending East Denver, um, it would be great to just really kind of throw a flag out and attract the people that we want to come see us instead of just kind of a random hodgepodge of whoever stops for our booth. 
Yeah, ab absolutely. And we, we thought that we could get more value and create more value for our community by instead of spending $30 or 30 grand for random people to have a fun event that we could really drive into the circular uh, circular, circular narrative to, to create value for our DAO members where they could trade their social tokens for a ticketed event. So that's something that we'll, we'll have some more conversations. Uh, was, uh, was really thinking about having this event for DAO Day be up here in, in NER. Right now, we're regularly, Nick, myself, and Tyler, when we get somebody to watch Brooke, are regular, regularly hosting a Crypto Rado for North Denver here at Satire Brewing. Brewing With the Eat Denver event being right before this, I think it would probably make more sense to find a venue there in Rhino is where the uh, Eat Denver event is kicking off. So we'll we'll have more more conversations and like that that's a good segue into what is squarely on my plate as far as uh, to really drive some value. One of the things that I'm really envision really envision gigs go green is to create a narrative where as there as a passenger that's driving passengers around Uber and Lyft is to create the narrative. Hey, instead of a tip go so that I can go green. And like, even though that I have a Tesla right now, right now, not green with my Tesla, because we're still pulling energy from the public utility, which is Excel Energy here in Colorado. And this is one of the upgrades that we're wanting to make here at Tesla House Co-op in North and North Glen. And we'll be talking more about that. And some of the thoughts besides just having like, so there's two, two thoughts to really, make this more copy and paste because that's one of the things that the things that I'm thinking through is that we're wanting the whole to to summarize what we're wanting to do here with gigs go green and i'm actually gonna uh this is a good opportunity to go back to this news articles and resource and resource so how to build a successful movement in four steps and steps and i'm gonna go ahead and this is the page that i created in notion and one of the reasons that I created this, did this is makes it easier for me to organize important elements. So like, so like Vickle had a couple authors, it was published on ideas.ted.com and it's related to this things. And we're actually talking about it specifically during this working group. So these were the steps that I found from, from this article. I'm actually just going to go ahead and open up this article because to me, we're building a movement here with this hashtag gigs go green. And if I wanted to summarize gigs green is it's a movement for gig workers to take action and go green. I think that there, this is a really compel, compelling narrative for so many different reasons. And the reason that it's most compelling for my, for my active speaking as a gig worker is because for a gig worker, Go, going is the most profitable way to do Uber and Lyft. And I strongly hold the belief that if anybody's doing Uber or Lyft and they're not doing it in a seven passenger Tesla Model Y that's black on black, they're doing it wrong. And that's some content that I'm going to create. But anyway, this is an article that I came across that I felt was really compelling enough that I went through some extra time and created that as an article and reason resource and reading about it again here. So, and this, let me, let me link this up for everybody on zoom so that they've got it. And I don't know, Tyler, this is something that I need to get a little bit better at. I didn't want to open up another browser window, but um, just going to put this out there to the universe. If somebody likes to the idea, the idea of a live stream or video producer, this is an opportunity uh, we're wanting to, wanting to use a studio to really elevate the, the production quality of our live stream. So if you want to get into that, let me know. Send me, send me a DM. DMs are open on all the social at Yonks. So, and this, this, this art too um, is also so of a self-promotion for a book that Jeremy and, and the co-author wrote, uh, Henry Timms, called New Power. So find your connected connectors, build a new power brand. So the new power brand that we're building is Gig, Gigs Go Green. And let me go back to Notion here real quick. So 
like, uh, like, uh, just go to the homepage here for Triple Win Foundation. This is our project page. So gigs go green. This is super, super fresh. Literally just made this the other day. Um, but, 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 but one of the I was wanting to show here is that we did acquire a couple web assets. We've got gigs, gigs go green, common gigs go green dot org. And with this being more of a, um, um, we're probably going to redirect the dot com and just focus around using the dot org because it seems to be more of a dot org alignment from what, how dot orgs and dot coms are normally used. So this is something that is exciting. One of the things too, the thoughts are, uh, and and Amy and I have had some uh, conversations um, just as far as like thinking through the green lens and like right now. Uh, there's a lot of green aspects like, like a wiki, the co-founder of Gitcoin has written a book talking about the, the green elf. And this is one of the things that there's all these, the, the 17 uh, SDGs this, that the United nations put forward and the 2030 agenda. So it will be fun and exciting to see what kind of traction that we can create through this gigs go green. So right now the thought is to really, to really position gigs go green as a brand that would be owned by triple win foundation. So, uh, and this is one of the things that I don't know what it's going to look like as, as far as really bridging nonprofit for profit government capitalism but that's really the goal of what we're building with the circular economy is to be a uh, community catalyst to really create distributed energy resources and circular economy there's a narrative in these local communities that we get movement in so so and getting back to the agenda here um let me pop back over there So this is our main agenda and media database. So here's the working group that we're on right now. So that was a little bit, and this is, again, a resource. Um, one of the other thoughts, too, and I don't know if I added this as an opportunity. Um, I'm going to bring that open into a window real quick. So Jeremy, I, I think it's a little early with 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 where right now, but at purpose.com, Jeremy co-author of New Power, and that's definitely a book that I'm gonna get uh on audiobook. Bus.com and it looks like that there's an opportunity for, and like I said, I, I think that we're still a little bit early, but um there is an opportunity. I can't remember if the surface here contact. Do you have a project you'd like to collaborate on? I think that this would be, be a good opportunity because I do think that this is a very compelling narrative. And because because the other thing too that's important important to consider is part of the reason that makes this all possible is the Inflation Reduction Act in, that was signed into law in 2022. Reset the clock for many green energy incentives. And we're talking hundreds of billions of dollars, uh, low, uh, lower 370, 380 billion, and it could be over 500 billion. And the clock is ticking on that. What do I mean by that? 2020 or 2022, it's 10 years. So the, so the clock from now until 2032, because in 2032, these incent incentives decreasing. So, it's the thing that's exciting too is the transferability, and that's another strong use case for base for blockchain. Um, I could talk about that stuff all day long. So, so back here, the on this the GoFundMe is again to create the narrative for gig workers, where because we're positioning Tesla Black as the most profitable community for gig workers. So we're really so we're really the gig workers. Join this go, gigs go green movement and really and really their passengers to create a compelling narrative because I think only through the power of community whether it's people investing in our in our prod people go funding a driver that is basically an ambassador an ambassador gigs go green movement so the thought is to have a QR code that we can have in the car where 
basically a little, a little says, instead of tipping me GoFundMe, here's a QR code. And one of the other thing, other things that's related on this unlock protocol, and I'll come back to that there. Um, so that's just a, just a thought I forget for somebody to help me remember. But the other thing too, is the opportunity to create, create like a few business card. That's one of the things that I love operating from an attitude of gratitude because at the end of the day, doing gig work is permissionless work. Like, work. like I, I would rather in 2023 go out and drive Uber, drive Uber than make six figures as an IT professional. And I made six figures for decades, made over a million dollars doing IT. And here's me, here's me very publicly that I would rather do permissionless gig work in, in a get paid to do that. And honestly, probably not even have to be a Tesla. But anyway, the thoughts are is to create a thank you business card, card and have like the opportunity to, again, take home that me message of a tip. Please go fund me. And then the other thing, too, with how that we're going to be structuring Tesla Black Dow, people will have the opportunity to become content entrepreneurs with, with Tesla Black Dow. And that's one of the other stories that we're going to uh, be creating. Does, does it have any other ideas um, with this? I think the it'll be more of the rubber meets the road. And from a timing perspective, this is going to occupy probably 40 to 80 hours of my own time in December to, to actually go out and drive and test out in real life, life these scenarios that we're talking about here. Can you go into a little more detail about how those cards would work? So imagine like like the the thank you business card, Sean. Yep. So it, it's basically like a, like a, a a foldable business card, and instead of like somebody having their like, hey, I'm a real estate agent. Here's my information on how that you can contact me. It's more of a gratitude card and then also a narrative. And the big thing is, is that it's a pack, pack business card format. You get the printing cost dynamics that you would normally get. So this would probably be like, you know, a 30 to $50 expense that we could create this template for for our members to use so that they could get those printed at their local business card card station store to give them a tool tool they could use to drive their passengers to go fund me because because the are here is that with a compelling narrative like let's say somebody was going to tip five dollars with a compelling narrative the opportunity to potentially increase that to twenty dollars or more i think is the oppor opportunity again this is the goal here with Tesla Black Dow is to create the most pro the most pro community for gig workers. So this is a tool to help gig workers earn more money. And the goal, you know, the thing about a GoFundMe is I'm wanting to create a narrative so that I can invest best in own solar EV infrastructure. We're planning on most of, most of the assets or all of these assets within this ecosystem to be tokenized. So my thoughts are, is that I'm actually wanting with, with any funds that I get through my own GoFundMe is to invest in the to tokenized offering. However, that we we look at that to market when the solar opportunity so that that would allow me to be to be my own owner in the circular economy that we're building out here. Okay. Um, I mean, I, I've used ubers and such in the past and i understand that you know typically passengers will tip the driver uh it's built into the uber app they you know they click a button and there it is um so you're, you're hoping that by passing a card people will go to a separate link and contribute to a gofundme i mean it doesn't seem overly likely that people would want to do those extra steps and then pay extra Unless there was a really compelling story behind it, uh, the the really compelling story is, is combating climate change here, and most people don't have a tool for doing that. And when we're giving them a tool that is a very real opportunity, and when you think about this, is going to be purely a numbers game. 
most dri drivers are really doing a hundred plus rides a week as a full time driver. So whether whether it's five percent or you know, and when you think about five percent, that's 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 only five passengers a week, but it's a very public narrative, and this is one of the things that. Uh, and, and things that's also exciting is the GoFundMe is just one aspect. There's actually there's actually a crypto uh, and there's a couple different um, blockchain Web3 centric. One is Give ETH, and and so it's doing the GoFundMe, and I'm going to put right here start a GoFundMe plus uh, Give ETH, and let me just open up GiveETH.io here real quick. We're all we're all familiar. Uh, GoFundMe, and that's one of the reasons that looking at doing GoFundMe. But there's actually some amplification that occurs within Give ETH. Um, and let me link this, this up for everybody here in the chat. So I went through the process a little bit of creating a project on, or at least created a profile. So this is one of the things that I'm going to take offline and actually create some content as far as creating but yeah my my expectation is is through a numbers numbers game um and that's one of the reasons that like using a more reputable platform like gofundme gofundme are very familiar with gofundme so um and this will of course be one of the reasons that i'm gonna i'm gonna be going doing this myself because this is an idea that i've had i really do believe believe that that human spirit will open up especially if you give them a vehicle and that's just based upon my my uh experience through through the 12,000 trips that I've done over the last 6 or 7 years now I haven't been you know advocating to my passengers about doing a gofundme and this is one of the things that I will very publicly here through through this format share with everybody and everybody and that's too through our uh like a math master is one of the ideas or a similar type of format as this to really work with uh, other gig worker workers, get this narrative refined as far as what we're communicating and or conveying vein via those tools. So like the other thing too, to kind of add a little bit of extra value, value conversation is that we're wanting to create a, a workflow using unlock protocol uh, where people could get a free NFT. Because like, like one of the other things that we're wanting to do and planning on doing is turning the houses and the cars, like, like talking here about giving rides, like we've got a vanity license plate. And I think that I mentioned it somewhere on this page. Let me find it. We own for yeah right here. So you know, creating a Instagram account for we own for we own for vanity plate on the car to kind of engage there and to tell to tell a story and that's one of the things that we will like likely ramp out into our strategy as we scale up and and here is that instead of like having a personal Instagram account have a Instagram for the cars in this Tesla Black Cooperative, where, where and again use social media and create more of a Tesla Black experience that you know can be more of a formulaic thought process and coaching opportunity for the drivers to to create more Tesla Black experience because as we know in in first century people pay for a premium to have a, a unique experience. And the belief is that people will also also reward drivers through a GoFundMe with for a for a unique experience as well. So that that's my belief. And, and that's something that I'm committed to getting out on the road here these early weeks of December um in uh prove that out. So I moved, I pulled those items down to the next actions because that's next action actions for me to get that uh, a little bit of framework set up and talked a little bit about unlock protocol. Um, we'll talk more about that here coming up. So one of the other things that we need to do is to get a the agreement. We're talking about getting a minimum viable product online, and to be to be quite honest, I would really like to see the minimum viable product online 
um, here, like here, like December. I, uh, I don't know if it will be realistic. Tyler and I are going to be traveling next week to Missouri and Ohio as a family. Uh, it's going to be a short trip considering that we're driving all the way to Ohio, Ohio, but um, we've got a lot of work to do to move this forward. Uh, just, just, to be, just to be clear, we've used agreements for rent for renting out. This has been an area of experience like True story, Tyler and I spent 10 to 10 grand on attorneys to do a regulation crowdfunding offering for a mobility play back in 2018 to 2020, where we brought a regulation crowdfunding offering right when the pandemic unfolded. So, so that mash up what we've got from all of those. And the goal is to create and create and protects the players that are involved. And the thing that will be uh, different about these is that these vehicles that we're looking to acquire through Tesla Black, the Public Benefit Corporation Corporation of Auto, will be owned by the coins that we're excited to, cre to create um, tokenomics surrounding the vehicles and um, the cooperative situation. So that's that's something we've got, and I'm going to um, bring that down. But as far as the other main agreements, so there's, there's, there's the... Uh, I'm going to put down here DAO member agreement. And when you say both, both need to be, is that what you were thinking on that, Tyler? I, I didn't hear you. You said that you had this in parentheses, both need to be drafted. Um, That was, that was referencing something else. I don't know if you moved it and you disconnected that. Yeah, it was up here to the in parentheses under the, because I was adding Tesla black, um, this is the owner, operator, um, driver. Uh, oh yeah, the op the op the op the operating agreement and the member agreement both need to be drafted. Yeah, so th this is the two hundred dollar a week. Um, um, this is one of the things, uh, and I'm gonna actually we had on here right now. I'm gonna I'm gonna bounce on here to the centrifuge. So. Um, centrifuge to have a better understanding what is centrifuge is there. And let me, let me actually do a search for private credit. So what is private credit? So here's a page, um, that I came across, uh, cause this is one of the thoughts are with what we're, what we're doing. Uh, with acquiring Teslas, like we're talking about raising a bucket of money of money of up to five million for Tesla Black of Colorado. Uh, we we want that to be for two things. We want to acquire air at least vehicles, and we also want to become the insurance company for those vehicles here here in Colorado. So the opportunity is instead of us using like three and a half million of that five million to acquire 50 50 Teslas to utilize private credit to be some of those stacks instead of just bringing all of the equity that we raise for that. So this is a really great page that the, the Alternative Credit Council uh, put forward as far as what is private credit. And to put this into some uh, blockchain or Web3 conversation, because we're really wanting to build this on using Web3 technology as much as possible, that's where centrifuge, centrifuge came to the conversation. And there is a great, great webinar. I haven't listened listen to this, but it just dropped literally um, the other day, uh, the 17th, 17th, so a couple days ago. And it was facilitated by uh, AMA.org, which was the parent company of this organization here that had the alternative credit, credit counts on. Uh, so this is more of a trade association for the private credit, and they also have a really great uh, thing that they're doing surrounding digital assets. So this is an organization that would probably make more sense for us to learn about. One of the ways that we can learn about we can learn about this, uh, like like a webinar, like what I just talked about. So this is something that I'm going to watch, and I'm going to watch in. Uh, I didn't have time to watch it um, between now and when, because uh, it was just yesterday that I created that I created while referencing this. So here's some people that were on here. Centrifuge, Centrifuge is somebody that we're looking at potentially being a partner. So 
the the coming back to what the question is, is uh, I don't think that it makes sense right now, but um, that's one of, that's one of the that we might have a compelling enough narrative that we could potentially have the conversation later. But um, I, I I think that we should at least kick this can down the road until our next working group. Um, but that's what we're discussing right now. So my thoughts are. Um, to kick this can down the road. I'm going to watch the webinar, but does anybody else have some thoughts on that? So yeah, I did. Yeah, I did create in there, but I didn't create as a tool. So I'm going to put real quick in our Dow solutions, a page page for centrifuge. And this is one of the databases that we kind of bring together, together things. So this is a, a centrifuge.io private credit. Let's see if there's also, I'll just put private credit for now and we'll put considering and I'll put this as a priority of three and we did a conversation with somebody that's an ambassador with Centrifuge on, on a, uh, that's a, one of our uh, LinkedIn connections in the ecosystem. So uh, that was part of the, under, the underlying station on the uh, Centrifuge as well. So I'm going to um, bring the, bring this and bring this down to the carryover. And I'm going to carry that over, uh, carrying over to next working group. All right. So we talked about the agreements. Um, this is this is something else that uh, I think Tyler started working on these a little bit, but I'm going to carry this down to do the next time here. So the Kickstarter. So. This is one of the things that is a great opportunity. I don't know how many people are familiar with Kickstarter, but Kickstarter is a rewards campaign. So like one of the rewards that we're going to we're going to create our DAO membership. We're positioning this as launching Tesla Black DAO. So this is one of the things that we can have as a reward and this will be this will signal signal going from pre-launch right now and until January 22nd of, of 2024, we're in pre-launch pretty much, pretty much for everything that we're doing. And this will basically be the launch for Tesla Black, Tesla Black Down. And one of the benefits that we're creating of coming in early is a lower price point that people will be grandfathered in for life at $69 a year instead of $97 a year for being a Dow member. So one of the things that also wanted to do was creating a book. And this is something that I think that, because the great thing about Kickstarter is that you don't have to have a product. It's basically a mechanism for bringing a product to market, to markets. Let's, um, benefits that we want to offer. This is where we're at right now. So I'm going to put, change this into bullet points, uh, book. Um, and I'm going to put, uh, maybe a $20 price point. I don't, I don't, um, for a question, uh, and then geeks go green with try try co op uh, crowd sourced book, and this is one of the things that could be pretty pretty exciting. Like we were having a conversation on Clubhouse, the opportunity of having this book be like a another one year subscription that where we could have this be a fun vehicle for del telling different stories or being a play, being a play -ber. However, that's something that we don't have to even finalize these conversations and we can really see what the market interest is through Kickstarter. And this is one of the things that um, we can have, have, um, I think that we need a really low uh, NFT, like, like a dollar or $5. And this is a uh, I back back to the gigs go green uh, Tesla black Kickstarter. And this is where we can just get uh, creative with some different types of rewards. And the thought of having a, a very low price point here is 
from what I understand is that the more people that you get backing it, and I don't know what the magic number is, if it's a hundred or 500, but then you start tapping into the larger pool of community that you get through, through starter. And this is one of the things um, I went through and went through and did a campaign. I don't have the link in front of me right now, all the way back in 2016. I'm sure that the best practices for, for, a successful Kickstarter campaign have changed substantially. And that's one of the, one of the things that going to really, like when you think about from a timeline standpoint, we still have two months about to our Kickstarter state. And this is one of the things right now, my main efforts are getting the minimum viable product, our DAO member online and the uh, WordPress and WooCommerce uh, where we can actually run people through a uh, checking out there with some initial stuff on the on the website. Um, and then, of course, our DAO member, and this is a $97 a year. And one of the things, the things too, that can be fun is to create some higher value, uh, uh, like some pretty audacious types of things. And I don't know what that would look like. Um, but, uh, I'm, I'm open for some ideas. If somebody else, somebody else wants some potential rewards that we could kickstart benefits, um, start rewards. Has anybody ever backed a Kickstarter project? Yeah, I've backed a Kickstarter project. So, what was what was the uh, types of rewards there that you that you uh, remember from that project, Sean? Um, so in this project, it was more of a um, a game setting that they were building, and you know, for the low level rewards, you could get like a PDF copy of the game. For the higher level rewards, they would give you a printed version, or maybe a signed printed version, or a version with additional features. Um, and that was the idea of like getting people to sign in at higher levels. And so like, you know, the basic version was just like, yes, I'm, I'm barely participating. So I'm going to get a copy of it, but, uh, at higher levels, people are going to get like a, a more tactical experience that they could actually hold in touch. Gotcha. And that's one of the things too, that we could maybe do is like, uh, like, uh, with this book, maybe have like it be a digital NFT, and then maybe like maybe like a um, printed book be like be like more, more expensive because printing books is expensive these days. Yeah, but you factor that into the con contribution, right? So if it costs yeah. twenty dollars to print the book, then you may get like fifty dollar level on Kickstarter or something like that. For sure, for sure. So the the main thing that we're looking to do is just to have a vehicle uh, for you know capturing more DAO members, but then also the goal goal is to talk about, of course, tri co op security token offering, which is not something that we can deliver via Kickstarter because Kickstarter is a rewards platform where no equity can be provided by co-op security token offering is the platform where people will actually invite in into these three cooperatives. So, um, and as far as the paid ad campaign, this is something that, uh, that uh, Tyler here, uh, one of the things I'm going to actually add another bullet point is, is, can we do our affiliate program as, as an OA. So what do I mean by this? So like, this is one of the things that we're, we, we, we're creating an affiliate campaign. And I don't know if there's some tracking methodology that can track that, but that's one of those. Um, and this is a uh, research if solutions exist. Um, and I'm going to put here Kickstarter. So we haven't talked that much about our affiliate program. That's something that we'll I'll I'll be sure that I'll be sure that we have details bundled in for conversation because we should be pretty close to launching our 
um, minimum viable product around when our next working group is. Um, but we'll have, but we'll have more questions. The uh, the Kickstarter is going to be a main focus after we after we get our viable product for the the Dalman Tesla online. So that um, I broke out this here. Uh, so unlock protocol grants. So I, I was going to put a screenshot here, but I didn't get time to do that. But um, I did did bring forward uh, unlock protocol is what we're going to be using using fulfill the DAO membership on a technical basis, and it's basically a composable uh, protocol upgradable smart contract. For for NFT memberships and or ticketed events is the primary use. So this is something that I think that there's a really strong use case for. And let me bring open the the grantee handbook. And we're, this is something that we're just going to go through here real quick. Um, I don't know if it necessarily makes sense uh, to submit here on today, but one of the things that I would that I would really really like to do between today. And our next working group is I'm going to uh, break out via a Google Docs. And one of the reasons that we still love using Google Docs is that we found that that's the easiest and most widely used and collaborative for collaborative. Writing. So I'm going to create a some ideas around our submission. And I think that they, I'm gonna, let me see if I can make this a little bit bigger here. So... Recommended granted grant. So read grants paid on website. That's kind of where we're at. Read governance page docs. Fill out a grant application on GitHub. And I think that they've got um, the grant application on GitHub, GitHub's repository. So this is very dev centric. Gives uh, GitHub is, is a tool that devs love using for collaborating. Um, so take a temperature check from the community on snapshot. So um, so it looks like they actually use GitHub repository. And this is one of the things that um, I'm not sure what those conversations look like. Um, I don't know how many grants that they normally uh, process, but uh, uh, there, there's a couple of use cases surrounding uh, this. One of, one of the, we were talking a little bit about earlier is one of the ideas that I have to create create a more educational and a more value added thing because like one of the things that things that I have an opportunity is to engage people like say hey how would you like to get a free NFT as a, a Tesla Black experience or something like that and that's where we can use unlock protocol as a component besides us using it in our DAO I think that there's an opportunity to teach drivers how to use unlock protocol as aspiring content entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs. So the things that I've already found and already know about gig workers are that gig workers are entrepreneurial. And I think the more that they go down that, the more entrepreneurial that they become. So this is so this is one that we can enhance gig workers through teaching them about this very because very cool where it can be a component within their workflow when they're out doing their gig thing where they can provide an experience. Like a lot of people have heard about NFTs, but most people when they've heard about it, heard about NFT, think of the, the Board Ape Yacht Club where people paid, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars or millions of dollars during the top of the, the crypto last crypto cycle. And now it's worth a fraction of that cost. That's that's what a lot of people, people's thoughts are around NFTs. Now there's actually some really cool things like like when you think about what we're creating here a community a DAO of gig workers where where premise the purpose of the community is to help gig work to be the most profitable profitable for gig workers and now we're talking about elevating gig workers to become content entrepreneurs and poten potentially in their passengers into um you know, a, a, a own community that they're building. So that's one of the things that I think uh, is a really strong use case. And the other, the other one is also, I think um, 
that would be more of like more of like a grant opportunity. I don't think that we can, I, from what I understand, if I remember correctly, and I actually participated, like um, Tyler and I, um, we, anyway, it's a longer story. We, 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 we've been using Unlock Protocol for years. Like we talked about Token Town, the HOA destroyer, that was done uh, using Unlock Protocol. So we've got really strong rapport with the Unlock Protocol community. And this is one of the things that we're anticipating can grow. But where I was... Uh, um, Unlock Protocol was also one of the people we interviewed on Dow Day. So that was another um, another fun thing for that. Yeah, ab- absolutely. And and uh, one of the things that was really cool at uh, ETH Denver 20, 2020, wasn't it, Tyler, that we got the uh, NFT with the uh, art... Or was it? I was it twenty. I don't Doesn't remember. Matter. It was the. It was. It was actually a charitable fundraiser for that for a huge wildfire here in the North Denver area, um, and um, wiped out like a thousand houses. And this this local artist donated a painting, and they made the painting into the NFT, and we we ended up with the original through giving to this charity raffle. But um, that, yeah, that's pretty cool. It's it's also what my what my uh, background is here on Zoom um, is the uh, that NFT that was done, um, but anyway, yeah. So going back here is I think that we've got a, more than a couple grant grant communities, and one of which is like we 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 think of what we're doing here, where we're talking about creating this workflow with Kickstarter. Or, and one of the things that I would really like to see, because, you know, I don't really, really want this to be a manual process of creating and minting these NFTs. So this would be a very unique use case for uh, actually like creating some type of grant uh, to figure out how to automate the minting of these unlock protocol, these DAO member NFTs with our Kickstarter campaign. I certainly think that that should be the use case that we should submit for, because that because that would be pretty. I mean, Kickstarter is a well-known, very successful rewards platform for, for, la- for launching creative projects. Uh, I would be surprised if anybody's actually attempted to launch a DAO using unlock protocol with Kickstarter. I'm just just guessing out loud here, but that's kind of kind of so I'm thinking that we should go that one should be our first one. And then like thinking from a longer term standpoint, I would like to do another unlock protocol grant uh where we're really teaching these these gig workers how to use their own and create their own unlock protocol smart contract to create as as a part of the Tesla Black experience. The Tesla Black experience is something that is going to be uh, a very work in progress type of dynamic, but that's really the the simplify what my vision is to create this unique unique Tesla Black experience. Um, so that's my thoughts. So what does everybody think uh, from an idea standpoint? How you, how you like you like in the ice of those two Unlock protocol grant requests. Uh, yeah, I think I think it could be good. Go ahead, Sean. I see you got your mic open. Mic open. Yeah, I mean, I you know, for me, it's so many moving parts. It's hard to keep track of like everything, but um, I think it's definitely something worth exploring. I mean, you you since you've had prior experience with unlock, I think we want to leverage that, but. You have so many different things going on here, so it's, it's hard yeah, to it's, yeah, keep no, track Tyler, of like what's to- what. <laughs> you're totally right. I think one of the things that we're looking at is overwhelmingly, Jason, and to a lesser extent, I am doing almost every part of everything. So that's one of the things that we're really excited about is for somebody to say, yeah, I want to work on that one project as a bounty. I want to work on the Unlock Protocol grant, and I don't want to design the Kickstarter. I don't want to do the website or whatever. I just want to do this one thing. Um, that's what we're looking for. One of the things that we are really trying to build a culture around is building bounties around projects. So when people, or even tasks, so when people get really interested in one thing, they can just do it and not feel like they have to have their hands in everything. That's that's what we're trying to build. Right, but like having a an un- unlock to do a Kickstarter, to do a, 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 a 
one of three DAOs to to do an NFT to do. I mean, it's yeah, no, it's, it is a lot, but I think mostly we're not going to be aiming the same audience at the same thing. Like, we're not trying to get people that are interested in Teslas, also interested in solar roofs, and also interested in everything. We're trying to um, present the whole project to to the core team and say they, this is everywhere we're going. But um, th- just think of it the same way. If you're looking for a hand soap on Amazon, you're probably not also looking for a lawnmower and web services, but it's the whole thing is is there. That's what we're trying to do. Yeah. I mean, it. like I said, it's it's from an outside point of view, I'd say it's confusing and, and hard to keep track of everything. So probably one of the things to do is to like better explain, you know, the, the path of like why, why you need all these different tools. And the tool tool in unlock protocol, that's going to be like a core organizational aspirational aspect. That's going to be what represents from a technology aspect, their membership into Tesla black, black DAO. So when I, when I'm talking about like a driver using, using that protocol to create their own community, that's a different use case, but like this one is a, a fundamental aspect from like an organization and governance governance. It's going to be the, the NFT this DAO member NFT that we're going to be creating for Tesla Black, that's going to be like, like basically a product that we're going to be selling the, what that will allow us us to do is to create proposals and workflow and a voting mechanism using a snapshot. And that um, haven't, haven't talked about snapshot, but that's one of the other tools uh, that is from a government standpoint, a, a pretty foundational aspect. And we we absolutely understand, absolutely understand that um, there's a lot of opportunity to create, and that's one of the things. I don't know if we've got that. Um, um, let me go over here to uh, Tesla Black Dow, our main our main page, because this is something that we talked about last week. Um, was uh, let's see where it's at. Um, So we're we're planning to create like an onboarding type of dynamic, and that's one of the things that we want to create too. Is more of a, a you know some processes where people can learn little snippets as far as far as uh, and and where most of that will come into play is this onboarding into the DAO. This is one of the things that we're really going to be structuring as a required and we'll probably set that up where or uh, do a replay but we're really wanting to um create create and that's going back to the cooperative principles that's one of the cooperative principles that exists too is really providing the education educational aspects so like we we absolutely understand especially like the work groups are, you know, these are, are these are things that we've been talking about to move the uh, projects forward. So that's one of the things that we absolutely understand will be a challenge is um, onboarding people and getting them acclimated to to new types of technology. And um, we we really really believe uh, that by doing that and by really they is like why Web3 matters and creating the ownership opportunity that it will be a compelling enough of a reasons for people to to learn this new technology. So um, the, the we'll, we'll, I'll carry this down for bringing up and I'm gonna actually add a, um, um, a next action too of uh let's see create a google doc for the for ideas for, for unlock protocol plus kickstarter campaign and part of the reason too that we want to do the unlock protocol grant is that it creates social signals there's there's a pretty strong existing ecosystem system around the more that we can create wins through e- easy what we th- what we think some low-hanging fruit 
Um, that's kind of the thoughts too on submitting the grant is that it shouldn't take that much effort, efforts and really creating a story because it's something that we really need to do, do anyway is we are absolutely going to be using unlock protocol to do our DAO member now automating the process so that when somebody, you know, goes through that process on Kickstarter, where it's not a manual process for them to get their NFT and then like go through. And that's one of the things that, that uh, using like talking about a user journey. And that's one of the things um, I've got a reference book over here. I don't know if you have any experience, Sean, with mermaid.js, mm -hmm. but documenting a lot of the stuff and having the documentation be in a me can be easily digested and or upgraded. That's one of the things that we're wanting to use, wanting to use it like Mermaid. One of the reasons also is that it um, in uh, here in Notion, we can, we can use uh, Mermaid, where's it at here? So, so we can Mermaid to put in um, the syntax for like a user journey. Um, so this, not this isn't mermaid syntax, uh, but it's a fairly simple markdown. Have you ever heard of mermaid, Sean? Uh, no, I have not heard of mermaid. So I'm. Oh, let me let me get it right here. So this is the uh, reference book that I was talking about. It's talking about the official guide to mermaid.js, and I actually have this this right here on defining a user diagram. I mean, it won't show up very <laughs> good here, but. Um, that that's uh, uh, the other thoughts too. Besides, like creating some user journey, because like there's there's going to be going to be a couple user journeys that we're we're talking about here. Like um, one of the things that I didn't get on um, is and let's uh, let's actually let's actually talk about right now is and I'm gonna put this down here is uh, one of the thoughts for creating a funnel into what we're building is a Facebook Facebook quiz. This is something that we've talked about using uh, with other projects, and I think I think this is a really strong use case. So, um, thinking about gigs go green quiz for rideshare drivers, and I don't know what that would look like as far as from a title standpoint, but um, um, think because like there's a couple ways that we is that we could one it would we could ask some thoughtful questions that we could bundle up and include like from a, from a, a standpoint, like, um, uh, how, how many hours a week do, do you, get? I don't know what the good syntax is on that. Um, and then like, uh, some choices might be, it might be like five to 15, um, 20 to 35 and then 40 plus and into some brackets like that. Um, do you currently have an electric vehicle or have, do you currently own an electric call? Have you thought of, uh, buying an EV. Um, what, what's some other good, good questions to ask that would be worthwhile surrounding this chain of thought for a gig workers quiz for rideshare drivers? Well, I mean, you want them to buy into being green, right? So you got to have a question about how important is it to you, for you to help save the environment? Well, so here's my thoughts on that, Sean, is regardless of their thoughts of going green, re remember, we're, we're positioning through the lens of a gig worker, and we're positioning our community as the most profitable, profitable for gig workers. I strongly hold the belief, regardless of what your thoughts are going green, it's the most profitable situation for doing gig work. And when you think about like gig workers that want to Drive the drive the lease and make the most amount of money possible. Driving an electric vehicle all, makes that happen. Happen. Maybe right. maybe that's a question. Well, no, but I mean, if you have that hashtag, gigs go green, and you want to like 
get people to buy into the hashtag and the, and the, and the motto, right? Then you want to have a question that feeds into that. Um, well, it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of two different things, Sean. The first thing is um, some of this is for the passengers. Um, some of it's for the drivers. I think at the end of the day, drivers care about making more money more than any other goal. If they can help the environment along the way, cool, whatever. But the, um, the biggest thing too is just saying a lot of green projects sort of out in the world are not profitable. So it's you're, you're sacrificing one for the other. We're saying this is actually the most profitable and it's green. So we're trying to position that to you. Pastors are saying, help your driver, help the environment. This is the solution. It doesn't require any government funding and solving the problem. Right. And then, you know, have a question that kind of leads to that answer, kind of like, you know, leading the witness. <laughs> well, the, the thoughts on with the, with the quiz is we're, we're not going to really onboard anybody into the DAO during, during a quiz. The thoughts are, is to provide a webinar. Um, and I don't know what that webinar would be called, but one of the goals that we would have is to convert the quiz recipients recipient to webinar participants where we could do a 20, 25 minute, minute webinar to really talk about um, the value proposition of joining Tesla Black Dow. And of course, some of that would be that would be the NIF surrounding driving an electric vehicle and and how, whatever we find that narrative to be. Um, so yeah, we, I, I think that a lot of people would say that they would love to love to you know, save save the environment or whatever. It's just that I don't think that we're given that. I, I think for most people, that's too far, really out of reach. And this would be a really strong way that they could do do that. Then also get the benefit of increasing their um, monthly budget by by making more money, whether that's by actually increasing their income, but also by reducing their expenses, which tends to happen when people, especially from a gas car into a Tesla. So that that's uh, one of the things. And one of the other things too. Hi, go, Jason. Go ahead, Amy. Yeah, uh, I think I resonate with what uh, Sean was saying, mainly because we can make this a win-win package where in uh, earning money does not negate the fact that you're doing good for the environment. So if we could formulate a thought process that they can win on both sides, why not? Well, they, they, they absolutely will. And right, right now the, the, we're looking at asking some questions to create a quiz or so like, um, and I, I'm, I'm open for, like, you know, if we wanted to ask the question and maybe like ask this question, um, how important, uh, how important is climate change, climate change, or how important is combating climate change? I think you need to just say sustainability. Uh, because people can make uh, their contribution in, in little ways. It doesn't have to be big ways. Um, how important yeah. is any sustainability? Well, I mean, you don't have to be that. Like yeah. For example, you could have a question that says, if you could make more money while protecting the environment, would you be interested? Yeah, something like that. Make it a win-win. This would be uh yes no uh and the and i i don't know enough about what the take capability abilities are let me see if we even have anything in here for quiz i think we do uh, yeah. so there was there was two platforms that was the play buzz and App, outgrow were two tools and i don't think that I, we'd ever gotten far enough along but that was um Outbuzz quiz. If you're actually providing an in innovative way to disrupt the status quo in order to provide sustainability goals, that is something that a group 
I don't know which one can actually turn our data into carbon credits. Um, what do you mean by turn data into? Like uh, if you're able to gather enough data, uh, it, you know, as we do this, that says uh, by being a member or by by doing this thing that we are providing to the community that we have increased or decreased use of uh, fossil fuels or our solar uh, EV chargers with our Tesla black uh, cars are making a difference. You know, it's it may not have data right now, but as you move forward doing this project and you collect those data, there are groups out there that can certify what we're doing has a benefit to the environment. So, yeah, you're as far as the the, the renewable energy, energy certificate and stuff like that, a, a, absolutely, absolutely. And that's something that we'll be looking at. Um, right now, the the thought is just put just putting some initial like getting some questions that we could because from a time 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 frame standpoint, I think that we're pretty close. Close, like I would really like to see us get a campaign online, like the second week of week of December, is just to continue to echo. I've got a personal goal where I'm wanting to onboard a hundred people into this DAO. And with the affiliate opportunity that we're creating with that, and that's one of the things that we'll be talking about during our next working group, group economics for the DAO member. And that's one of the things, the top, the tokenomics for the entire ecosystem, that's a much more complicated thing because what we're doing is not simple. And having, having three organizations that we're wanting to be move towards an increasing centralization and having a solid go governance framework and using token technology to do that when most people haven't even heard of heard of token is is it's it's an undertaking but that's the great thing about this is that um we're, we're playing the long game here um and this is something that can be an ongoing work in progress and um we want to want to get grading feedback too because like whether that's somebody that's participating in a working group or somebody that comes to a webinar and like this is one of the things i don't know because there's a lot of opportunity to take some of this because we're with this facebook facebook quit basically wanting to create a way to pay for advertising and advertising and buzz is one of those that uh chris smith and conversion code made reference to another one was out out buzz up here a second ago um and it might have slipped behind uh, i wonder if i minimized it out grow quiz so i'll open up this again so this was another another platform for doing facebook quizzes outgrow and play buzz so and 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 look like this this even has an AI quiz maker, but this is one of the things. This is one of the things potentially package in some usable manner to provide some worthwhile aspects. Because um, one of the other things too is that there's there's data from from a human perspective perspective, like data from somebody filling out a poll, an online quiz. Uh, one of the things one of the things that we collect data around is we're wanting to quantifiably demonstrate that that big workers in our model make more money and that's one of the things well how can we do, can we do that we won't have access to what gig workers are earning unless they're providing that and that's one of the things that i think that think that there's a opportunity to use some circular economy some tokenomics here where we could reward some tokens for people to upload their you know their ride data um, and then if they're okay with their income being like maybe pseudo anonymous or anonymous as far as as far as that as far as that things that we can have as we begin to ramp up uh, members into into that can have more conversations. But that's just some ideas that I've had. Like um, we've we've talked a little bit about like uh, like uh, AI and 
Um, I'm looking at the time here. We've only got 10 minutes left. And, and things that we like to do during this last slice of time is, is ensure that the decisions and next actions have been heard. Um, I think that we did a pretty good job moving carry over stuff from, from today into, in, into the next actions. Um, one of the things that we didn't get on here was discussing real estate trust attorneys. Uh, and this is something that I've got, an got another book sitting on my desk here that is uh, Community Matters. And this is talking about community land trust practitioners. That's one of the three. That's actually the third of this circular economy economy with cooperatives that we're looking to create is the real estate engine so that we can so that we can bring these parking lot and so, uh, solar EV through a parking lot and a single family house model. So that's one of the things. Uh, things um, other things too. Um, we we are having a conversation with with another attorney, uh, Yev Muchnik, who is a Dow Web3 and cooperative attorney who who's licensed practice here in Colorado. Um, let me let me bring open this from this real quick. We've mm -hmm. talked about unlock protocol. Let me actually bring open the dashboard for unlock protocol where we are using our board of steward. So unlock protocol. Um, and I'm gonna have to sign into sign into that real quick. I'm gonna um let me grab that real quick so this is the dashboard dashboard i've got the metamask real quick so um but anyway getting back to getting back to the comment we've got a, a short conversation with yev on monday a, and the way that we're really looking to do the the governance for bringing this three co-op security token offering offering to mark and I'm going to actually change gears a little bit because this is probably even more important than showing the unlock protocol was the uh, B labs. Um, let's see. So uh, this is something that we've had some conversations in uh, was going through and doing our B impact assessment. Um, and from a timing standpoint, this is something that I don't know how much, and this is something that we may need to have a breakout I'm really hoping that we can go through this BPAC, this BPAC impact assessment for all three organizations because it's it's something I would like to see all three Colorado and we're looking at doing a public benefit corporation is the and and the thought public benefit corporation is that public benefit corp corporations are a globally recognized standards for um a governance framework for public benefit benefit corporations, and we do have some additional legal requirements with the public benefit corporation, and so that's one of the things that we we've, we've started going through that. And do you think that it would make the most sense to do that that in a belt conversation, or should we do that package within our working group? And right now, I'm thinking thinking like kicking these conversations to January and just focusing on. Uh, getting the MVP for Tesla Black Dow online here in December and then working towards our Kickstarter. Um, um, I'm going to go on mute and let you all hear some thoughts on um, whether we do that here in our working group or in a breakout conversation for the B Lab impact assessment. Uh, well, I mean, the group seems very small right now, so I don't think you really need to have breakout groups yet that, that that's definitely very fair and kind of the thoughts are is if somebody's interested in that then we can have a breakout conversation and not take the time for the working group that's the only thought not not from a mm -hmm. um because it, it, it will probably take and and or what from a time standpoint but it's we we've allocated like five to five to fits in some previous slices, but it really didn't like it wasn't as immer immersive of an experience. And maybe maybe we just we just dedicate our working groups to go through and just focus entirely on that in January. That that's that's another thought. Yeah, certainly that's valid. So let's let's probably go that route, and we'll see. See, uh, I don't know. I'll, I'll take a look at the time timeline as far as because 
it's only $150 to flip the needle as far as the assessment. I'm not sure what the, the timeline is because I would, I don't know. If, I don't think it actually, because uh, the thoughts are here is the January 22nd with our Kickstarter. Um, I think it would probably make sense to just prioritize doing for the one organization Tesla Black Dow, Black Dow, and then um, and I'll I'll take this offline and see what the timeline is as far as as far as pay the hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, uh, go ahead, Sean. I think there's a, another good point here in that since you have all of these different DAOs and orgs, um, you know, games in play, it would be good to like get one going and have lessons learned from that one leveraged on the others. Yeah, and you're you're absolutely correct. Um, we are getting some additional synergies though by doing because we need to have some of the uh, governance. Like, it doesn't have to uh, be completely in place. Um, like when we do when we do dirty token offering, but we absolutely need to have the legal entity in place. Place that was a little bit um, where was talking about creating this board of stewards for web three freedom club. And that brings it back to back to the question with yet yeah, Muchnik and some of the other, cause, cause this board of stewards, what we're planning is to have a quarterly meeting and we're looking to do our first quarterly meeting uh, after we get the Kickstarter campaign launched before we do the, the free token offering, it'll be basically be a go, no go decision where we're looking to summarize where, where we're at and looking to ask and have the question answered by our board of stewards. Are we ready to do our security token offering on 222? And then, uh, we're looking to have that be a quarterly dynamic to fulfill the governance while we're looking to create increasing decentral decentral within these organizations that we're launching via the security operating offering prior to that like we're obviously going to be much more heavily leaning into tesla black dow but that's one of the things that will be that will be entering is that the governance will probably be a little different like with like with tech dow for example, than Solar EV that will also probably, I, I could definitely see the governance sense for Tesla Black Dow being quite a bit different than what the governance is for Solar EV, Solar EV. And that will probably be more similar in a model to what we look to creating for Web3 Community Land Trust, just thinking about the municipalities and the barriers that come into play with energy resources and real estate and just the regulations that exist this as with like a mobility situation like tesla black and cars you don't really have the the lo the local municipalities with as much consideration because those boundaries aren't really as really as relevant or the uh uh the cars and the insurance like within the tesla black uh vertical but um we're we're, we're here at the uh Two hours. I uh, Brooke must have ran Tyler out, Tyler out, because I see he hopped off. But um, this is a great start. Um, one thing that I'm going to go through here real quick um, is I, I talked a little about this at the start. Is I'm going to go ahead and create a a let meet for our upcoming working group. Um, so this is something. Let us meet is a tool. It's a heat map tool where people can say. When are we available to do a, a working group? So this is something I'm going to put it here for, for um, and this is to pick the time for our next working group. Um, and this, I'm going to put it, I don't know that this will look with this many days, um, but this will be for our next working group. group and let's meet. I'm going to actually just get this because I've got some copy and paste stuff from our previous CS ones. So it's that since we've had a working group, uh, so let's meet. And this is for, we're finishing up right here, here, work number seven. So this will be what do you, what do you, eight.
And I can't remember, Sean, uh, but we did, we did do, and this is one of the things that will be interesting is we submit, submitted a hex team for solar EV for the solar prize round seven and for community power accelerator round two. So we, so we should have feedback from those prior to the end of the year. And that's something that we can use just to further bind our narrative. Now with the narrative surrounding gigs go green with tri op STO. It's a very different front narrative and a much more advanced narrative than what we were submitting with, with solar EV. Um, all right. So I'll share this with everybody here offline and get that uh, going. Um, but we're, and we'll see what the, uh, what the people, what the people, because one of the, one of our uh, core team contributors, the reason that we're doing this was, uh, like I said, Nick was struggling to find the uh, time on Sunday with a family commitment. So, so um, here's this link, and I'll share that with everybody on our LinkedIn, LinkedIn group chat as well. But um, any final thoughts before we uh, call it for a wrap here today, either Sean or Amy? Amy. No, nope, no. Nope. Have a All good. great rest of your Sunday. All right. Thanks, everybody. And I'm wearing the Broncos. The Broncos are playing the Vikings. So go, go Broncos. And I'll end it with that thought. To, to, and uh, have a great week. And if we I, we won't be talking, we won't have any meetings here this next week, unless you're going to interested in being in the attorney conversation. And if you are, send me a DM. And otherwise, we'll be back here. Have a fun and safe holiday, Thanksgiving holiday coming up here, everybody. Here, everybody. Thank you for coming, Sean. All right. Thanks. Good night. Bye-bye. Yep. Yep.